Hi guys, this clip involving our old friend Anne Whittacombe is a bit of a mess, but I thought it was important to respond to it. In the interview, she and GB News tried to paint a very negative picture of the EU. They also confused the European Union with individual member states, either because they don't know the difference or they think the audience won't. What racists and bigots will tell you is that Britain is either full, it can't take in any more asylum seekers, or that Britain has already taken its fair share. This is completely untrue. In 2022, according to a number of sources which I'll leave a link to, Germany took in the bulk at 25,000, while the UK took in 24,000. Since 2015, 570,000 Afghans have sought asylum in the EU. But let's hear what they have to say. And it's always ladies first on this show, so I will let you take it away. We're the good guys, aren't we? Yes. And the appalling thing is that the Afghan war was, of course, a NATO war. I know a lot of people think it was just Britain and America, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It was a NATO war. So all NATO was involved. Uh well, OK, yeah, 50 nations were involved, but to different levels. Not all 50 nations sent the same number of troops and were not as involved as others. I'm not sure what point she's trying to make here. Like, how many, if it's about asylum seekers, how many asylum seekers did the United States take in from Afghanistan? That would be an interesting question to answer. In that war, and therefore all those countries involved should, uh, and uh, apparently were once going to, uh, take their share uh, of the fallout in terms of the refugees. Uh this is really strange because when it came to other issues about asylum seekers, Britain was like, well, no, we don't have to take our fair share because we're far away. <laughs> that, that was one of the arguments. We're an island. We don't have to take, you know, why should we have to take our fair share? Let um, Spain, Italy and Greece deal with this. We, we're far away. We, we don't have to take in asylum seekers. Uh, but whereas, and I don't think we did terribly well over the Afghan interpreters, and I've said that on this program many, many times, and I think we did betray the interpreters, but we have taken many more refugees uh, than other countries in Europe, something like 13,000 uh, Afghans. Yeah. Um, so I don't think we're doing that badly when it comes no. to uh, looking uh, for our, our, our international obligations. I think we're doing quite okay. well, minus okay. the interpreters, which I think was appalling. Dennis, if you tip up in Greece as a genuine Afghan asylum seeker, you get lobbed in a squalid detention centre on an island somewhere and given no access to public services or any provisions. In this country, you can rock up illegally on a boat, we'll put you in a four-star hotel, we'll let you send your kid to school and we might even build you a new house. We're the good guys. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm confused. We're the good guys. So, the host here is saying this is a good thing. If people arrive in the United Kingdom and they're put up in a hotel, well, they don't want to be put up in a hotel. They would prefer to be able to be processed and, you know, rebuild their lives. They don't want to be stuck in a hotel for the next three years. But he's trying to suggest that this is good. But this entire channel's purpose, it seems, is to paint asylum seekers as something terrible. And, you know, people living off the state, they, they don't have any choice here. But as this is all negative, 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 negative uh, rhetoric surrounding asylum seekers and immigration in general. Now he's trying to say, well, this is actually a good thing. I'm confused. But when he's saying about Greece, Greece has a population of 10 million people. And it's full of bloody islands. <laughs> so as this um, ex-labor guy is going to come on and explain... It's a different kettle of fish. It's a completely different scenario that you're comparing the UK and Greece. And also Greece is on the front line when it comes to um, people crossing from North Africa into Europe. I think I've always said Britain is generous, be generous to Hong Kong people, be generous to Ukrainian people. Greece's problem is simply it's got about 2,000 islands of which 250 are uh, inhabited, big ones like Crete, smaller, lovely ones like Santorini. And you can simply arrive on one of those, in a, almost in a rowboat, fall off onto the beach, and then it's the Greeks' responsibility to look after you. And they say, 
We'd like to share this out because they're all coming mainly well, Germany's from Germany's not accepted a single Germany. Afghan refugee from their quota of 1,000. Germany's Ger a big country. Germany has said from 262,000 Afghanistans accepted them. What Germany, I, I imagine, I'm not speaking for Germany. You people talk about the EU. The EU this is all once again very strange because he's talking here, the host, about, well, Germany hasn't taken its fair share. But the rhetoric is we need to stop people from coming in in the first place. Like when it comes to Britain, they say we don't want anyone coming in. So we've moved from we don't want anyone coming in to countries in Europe need to take in their fair share. And of course, they have taken more than Britain. Britain is, is taking the least in many cases. So this idea that you know, there are other countries taking in fewer, but in respect to the population, Britain is taking in much fewer asylum seekers than France or Germany, for example. <laughs> Once again, their rhetoric is normally we need to stop even one from coming in. Now it's, well, we need to spread them out. You can sit up and say, everybody just take their share. Mm -hmm. And everybody says, what? What? We're British. We're not taking your refugees. And the Germans say we've taken 260,000. Maybe that's enough. Try okay. another country. Uh, and when people pipe up and say our Rwanda scheme is horrible and it's racist and it goes against people's human rights, I mean, should we just point them in the direction of the way that the European Union is treating these people? It's not the European Union. The European Union is not treating these people in a way. If, if you, you mentioned Greece. Greece is not the European Union. You mentioned Germany. Germany is not the European Union. What is, why is this so difficult for Brexiteers to understand? Well, actually, it's not a bad idea because the European Union is mistreating people who are genuine refugees. The people pitching up on our shores in the small boats are, are largely economic migrants who have absolutely no claim to be here at all. <laughs> but then why is the Home Office processing when they eventually do process these claims, process the claims and give asylum to about between 80 and 90 percent. According to Anne Whittacombe, these people are not real asylum seekers, but according to the Home Office, about 80 to 90 percent of them are. So there's an enormous moral difference. Uh, and I, I, I'm not going to say we're purer than pure, because as I say, you know, I've got the, the, the problem with the Afghan interpreters. But that aside, uh, I think we have been an example to the rest of Europe on this one. Uh, Rwanda is for economic migrants abusing our system. It's not for uh, people who helped us in a war. The, and this is probably the biggest lie of, of the whole lot. It's not for economic uh, migrants. It's for asylum seekers. Rishi Sunak, Suella Braveman have said it themselves. These people are going to be sent there to process their asylum claim in Rwanda. They're not going to process their asylum claim in Britain. The claim will be made in Rwanda. And it won't be a claim to to remain in Britain. It will be a claim to remain in Rwanda. It's about sending people to Rwanda one way. It's not even about sending them there to be processed and then if they succeed, they move to Britain. No, it's to send asylum seekers, not economic migrants, asylum seekers to Rwanda. That's the problem here. That's why there are legal challenges against it. Because it's potentially illegal. Under UN conventions, you're supposed to process people's asylum claims in the country where they make the asylum claim. What the, the Tories and the Brexiteers are trying to do is stop people from making the claim in the first place, send them to Rwanda, and then ask them to make the claim in Rwanda. And of course, give Rwanda a lot of money in order to, to take these people. But it's not about processing asylum claims for eventual residency or a refugee status in Britain. It's about Rwanda. This is, once again, people telling lies on TV are not held to account over it. Dennis, the European Union has absolutely lost the moral argument. They are the opposite of what they claim to be. The <sighs> I have to end it here because the, my blood pressure is going through the roof. It's not the European Union. Wh where does the European Union come into this? Like when we're, You started off by talking about NATO. You talk about the Afghan war and it was mainly a NATO war. What's that got to do with the EU? The EU wasn't involved in, Af in Afghanistan. The EU is not NATO. 
what's wrong with these people? Do they not understand the difference between Greece and the EU? Do they not understand the difference between Germany and the EU? They just see European country, okay, let's attack the EU. <sighs> Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.